episode of Dyer Times. I'm your host, David Dyer, and today we find ourselves in Ithaca, New York, once again at Primitive Pursuits, uh, here for another one of their excellent wilderness classes. If you missed the last one, which was the wilderness instructor course, you can click here for a little bit of a refresher and check that one out. But this weekend, we're here for the hide tanning workshop, where we're gonna take raw deer hides and turn them into buckskins. So I'm gonna go meet one of the instructors and talk about the process and check out some of the things that they have to offer here at Polar Pursuits. So, let's go. So here we caught up with Justin Sutera, one of the primitive skills instructors here at uh, Primitive Pursuits. Uh, and he is pretty much in charge of the hide tanning workshop this weekend. Tell me a little bit about that. So we're taking deer hides and we're taking them start to finish in one weekend, which is kind of crazy, it's a lot of work, but we're focusing on the wet scrape green tan process, which is using all natural materials, everything nature provides, no chemicals to transform the hides from a stinky piece of flesh to, you know, finished, finished, soft, beautiful buckskin that'll last you forever as clothing or whatever you want to make out of it. Oh man, that's really soft. So. Now, uh, I know that uh, th this course is about three days long, well, two and a half days, I yeah. guess, really. And they, they're definitely full days. We're about midway through the course at this point and covered in hair and uh, all that good stuff. But uh, so buckskin, bucking, is, is not deer skin. Yeah, so buckskin refers to the way the hide was tanned, not the animal it came from. You can make buckskin from elk, moose, deer, buffalo. You can make buckskin from anything. Buckskin means that it is tanned with natural oils, mm -hmm. physical manipulation, and wood smoke. Um, and that's where brain tan buckskin is where the brain is the natural oil that you use as the source. And yeah. Okay, so w walk us through the process. You, you pull the hide off the animal and go. So once you pull it off the animal, you can decide to start to tan it right away or store it. If you want to store it, you can put it in a freezer mm -hmm. or you can salt it. Um, but if you're going to tan it right away or if you've stored it and you've got your hide ready to go, the first step is to take the flesh off. So on the flesh side of the animal, when you skin it, inevitably there's going to be flesh and meat on there. Um, so we take that off by putting the hide on a bean and then using a dull scraper. You know, we're not going to cut ourselves on because we don't want to cut the hide, we're separating layers and then we're going to push off all the flesh. And then once the flesh is off, we're going to flip it over, and we need to take off the hair and the layer of skin called the grain, which, if you've ever seen a piece of commercially tanned leather, it's the shiny side. So this hide I actually tanned with the grain on, and you can see how that's oh, okay. kind of that shiny. A big difference, yeah. yeah, and you can see where the grain's off and where it's on, where it kind of messed up. But this makes it really waterproof. This was a different method called bark tanning. To take the grain off, it's an entire layer of skin. And again, we're just separating layers with this wet scrape process. We're not actually cutting the hide. So in order to take that grain off, we could do a couple things. We could soak the hide in wood ashes mm -hmm. for a week, mm -hmm. four Which days. Which is kind of like a lye type yep. of solution. It'll make the hide swell, puff that grain up, and then it'll scrape really well. But then we need to get it rinsed out back to neutral pH. You could also do a controlled rot where you leave it in a stream for a week and then it's gonna smell a little bit, but that'll come off as well then. Scraping it the same way on your PVC pipe or wooden beam with your hide scraper like this, which you can, you, there's primitive um, counterparts to all these tools. Okay, it so it'd be like, like bone or a, or a you know, kind of flat piece of wood or something like that? Or? I've used, yeah, a sharp piece of wood that I've put an edge mm -hmm. on. I've also used a deer bone, one of the bones from the front oh, legs yeah, makes yeah. a nice scraper. Also, you I've just, taken- You just kind of cut the middle section out mm -hmm. and- taken a V-stick and embedded a, a flake of a flint nappable rock oh, yeah. in it, yeah, yeah. and then you've got a nice scraper. And it works just as well, it just takes about 20% more effort. Sure. So we could also, what we're doing in this workshop is soaking in hot soapy water, which is going to puff that grain layer right up for us, allow the hair to slip a little bit. Um, really hot, just about hot enough that we can barely stand it. And that's going to help speed it up, especially for the scope of the weekend course. And then same thing, we're going to scrape it off. and. It's tricky to know if you've gotten all the grain or not. The first hide I ever tanned, I didn't take off any of the grain because <laughs> I didn't know. Sure. But and you can still see there's some spots where I missed it, but I'm okay with imperfections like that. Well, yeah, it gives a character. So once the grain is off the hide, then the next step is to get it ready to go in the brains because we okay. need to give it, or I'll, use, I'll call it brains, but you can use any natural oil or any emulsified fat, I should say. All right. Which can be obtained by soap and oil mm -hmm. or egg yolks um, or just brains. And I'm sure there's other ways you could do that too, but those are the three big ones. So when you, when you do that, what is it actually doing to the hide? 
All right, so the, the natural oils that come from the grains are gonna lubricate the fiber network. So all of our scraping that was done, the goal there was to isolate the fiber network, almost like suede, right? Suede doesn't have the grain on it. Suede sure. leather is smooth on both sides. Um, so we've isolated the fiber network, and then if we just let it dry, the collagen in the skin is gonna turn rock solid and rawhide, like a dog toy. Okay. Right, it's rock solid. So in essence, are you saying we could take a dog toy and rehydrate it and, 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 tan, and tan it into a piece of leather? Could, yeah. That's cool. And that's the source of hide glue, actually. The collagen is mm -hmm. if you boil those scraps, you get hide glue. But so the fibers are going to be lubricated by that oil, but that's not going to do anything unless we physically manipulate the hide. If we soak our hide in the grains and then just let it dry, it's going to be rawhide, it's going to be crispy, and we're not going to be able to get it soft. Not usable, not wearable. Mm -hmm. But as the hide goes from damp to dry, if we keep those fibers moving by stretching it, cabling it, braiding it, working it, then it'll prevent that glue from setting up and it'll be nice, soft, fluffy bucks. Okay, so but at that point, like if it got wet again, then it would just go back to that rawhide state? Not instantly, but it could. It's nothing has been chemically changed within the hide. Okay. So the final step is we smoke it, and the smoke literally creates bonds. I'm not sure chemically exactly sure, what it's doing, sure. but it's chemically changing the hide and kind of solidifying that tanning process, making it. You know, my that's, buckskin that's clothes really I've washed in my washing machine. I don't like to use a heavy detergent sure. on it. Sure. But and then it, that's also what gives it its color, correct? Yeah, and depending upon the color you want and the function of it, you can smoke it more or less or smoke it with different materials. You can make it darker. The longer you smoke it, the darker it gets. Sure. So, How close is that to, say, the way that our ancestors, Native Americans, did it? It's hard to say. Um, I, I'll probably say that every, every tanner that I know modernly has their own little way of doing it. Sure. So I'm sure that all the native peoples had their own way of doing it, dictated by climate, dictated by available tools, available animals. Um, so I'm sure it was always different, but the basics of how the skin behaves under the certain moisture, um, the wood ashes, grains, that is probably all similar because that's how the skin is going to Wow. So, and, and how long have you been tiny hides? I started tanning hides when I was 14, so eight years I've been okay. tanning hides. Wow. And, um, how many think you've done in that time? I've, I counted once. I've done about 60 deer hides. Wow. I've done three buffalo fur on robes. Um, I've done a lot of other furs, like Jack Lewis, Fox. And, uh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So what would you, what would be your advice to the person that would be interested in uh, buckskinning or starting to learn how to tan? I would say don't be discouraged by, there's a lot of information out there that says that this is almost impossible, that it's really hard, and luckily I was stupid enough as a kid to just want to go at it anyway and learned a lot from trial and error, but it's really accessible. As you're seeing this weekend, the right yeah. tools, the right instruction, you can get it, you can get this process uh, under control pretty quickly. It makes beautiful stuff that's really expensive and hard to obtain. You know, it's way, it's different than commercial sure. Than leather. Sure, it's, it's amazing. It's breathable, it's light. It's just, it's my favorite fabric for being in the world. It's awesome. Well, and I, and I can tell you as a frustration that I had learn, wanting to learn to tan is, you know, I hit YouTube, which, you know, you're watching now, so <laughs> maybe that'll be your jump off point for learning this. But I got a bunch of books and, and several things like that. and. It was always very frustrating because, like you said, everybody has a, just this different way of doing it or this or that. And, and uh, you know, so really getting up here and being able to get my hands on a piece of this and go through the process, it, you know, it's been invaluable to me. So I uh, definitely encourage you if you're in the Ithaca, New York area, uh, to check out Primitive Pursuits and, and get in this uh, workshop. They only do it once a year or is it twice a year? I'm gonna try and push to do it twice a year, but Excellent. at the Excellent. moment it's been once a year. Okay, go ahead. Go to the summer camp actually with the kids. Oh, kids. Yeah, that would be amazing. Except they do it in a whole week long. Course. Well, that would be, I think, a little better easier, for. Yeah, because yeah, I can tell you, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's hard and rough business. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're doing it in, like I said, two and a half days. Uh, is that is that pretty normal? I mean, is that how? No, it's kind of crazy. Okay. It's doable yeah. if you want to do it, but um, what I would say is every hide wants something different. And the more you can tune in to just um, tuning into the hide pretty much, it'll make the process more effortless. A lot of primitive skills, if you try and impose your will on it, you're gonna get nowhere. Like if you're making a bow, you can't impose what you want on that. You need to just make the bow that's in the piece of wood. So by tuning into the hide and giving it what it needs, some hides I know that it needs to soak for a week in the tree, sure. or I wanna do this or that or something else. So I just kinda 
and, and that makes it difficult to teach too because I do everyone differently myself. Of course, of course. Um, well, but you know, it's, it's good to have that, that base knowledge and that jump yeah. off point. Because uh, I know just like over there, you know, you're always saying pay attention to the way it feels, pay attention to the way it smells. Yeah. Um, and that's that's just the kind of stuff that you really can't get from a book, you can't get from a video. So, you know, I definitely encourage you to get out and, uh, you know, get your roadkill deer or get you something, you know. Yeah. There's there's animals everywhere and unfortunately they die every day. So we, we want to try and use as much of, of them as we can and, um, you know, show as much respect to, to that animal as we can. So, Justin, it's been an absolute pleasure. Appreciate having you on the on the show today, and uh, I am anxious to get back over and get to my hide. Cool. So, uh, if you'd like to check out a little bit more of what Primitive Pursuits has to offer, you can click here for the Wilderness Survival Instructor course. Uh, if you just want to see a little more uh, self-defense, dire time style, uh, you can click here for the Taser Strike Light, uh, which is an awesome, awesome device. Check yeah, that out. If you haven't seen it, uh, it's really excellent. I work with Ernie Boggs. Uh, who is Team USA jiu-jitsu coach like crazy. Yeah. I basically get tased about six times. It's, it's horrible, <laughs> horrible. Jeez. But uh, yeah, so you know. We'll check it out. Right here. Uh, and then if you'd like to see a little bit more on practical survival, you can click here. As always, I'm your host, David Dyer. This was Dyer Times, and thanks for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.